now we will look at the method called ellipsoid method and this method uh, uh, is not uh, important in terms of a practical importance it is important because of theoretical understanding this method was discovered in 1980 and uh, it was discovered in soviet union and it became a big news here in 1979 can see this news article in uh, in the New York Times when they're saying Soviet uh, discovery has basically rocked the mathematical world and they will optimize better than us and therefore we will lag behind in, in, in Cold War. This is a bit dramatic statement but uh, people are scared in those times. So what ellipsoid method does, it, uh, it takes a constraint ax less than equal to b and says that I am going to find a satisfying assignment. In this presentation, we will assume that Ax less than or equal to b I'm, is, is bounded. I mean, it means that whatever uh, constraints are, they, they specify a bounded space, not like open and ended space like this. Second part is a full dimensional. If let's suppose it, if your uh, vector space is, uh, is n dimensional, then Ax less than or equal to b is full dimensional. I mean, the the ball like the poly polyhedron is is covers the whole space. It's not flat surface in in, in this n dimensional space. Before understanding this method, we need to understand the sizes of polyhedron and uh, the two important ideas in the sizes of the polyhedron. One is the smallest polyhedron is the biggest polyhedron. Let's, let's see what, what am I talking about. Let's suppose I give you a number. I say the size of the number is integer is that how many bits it needs you need to represent it. Like you take a log 2 and see how many bits you need to represent that integer. If I give you a rational number, you represent by mutually and prime numbers and uh, uh, so then you say the size of each one of those integers and their uh, uh, their sum is the size of the rational number i give you a vector or some some sequence of numbers their size is the basically the size of sum of the all the numbers and plus n you need to keep the record of how many numbers are there so that you basically add in the size and extending the idea you can uh, you can define the size of a uh, matrix A. Using this uh, size parameter, we can actually uh, estimate the size of polyhedron, not only upper bound and also the lower bound. Let's see how, how do we do it. So if a solution of Ax less than equal to B exists, then what we can say is that uh, there is a solution uh, with size less than or equal to 4n square phi, where phi is the maximum row size. How do we say that? Uh, remember that if you have a solution that the, 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 you have a, a, a polytope like looks like that and a solution uh, there are solution always on the corners and these corners are, are the meeting of n constraints at this some point okay so if we choose n rows from this this guy and put turn uh, less than equal to into equality and let's call it a prime x equals to b prime we choose a prime row such that they are linearly independent therefore we get a single unit point when we solve this problem and we get a vertex like this and uh, this would be a solution if this point satisfies the rest of the rows in in your constraints so so how do you do, what is the what is x uh, basically a inverse uh, a, a prime inverse and times b prime you can see that this is a basically computation of determinants and uh, and taking the inverse and computing a b b prime this can be easily uh, estimated and you can see that the maximum value of x you can be 2n phi where the phi is the <coughs> uh, size of uh, uh, max, ma maximum row size in in your in your a So, so therefore the size of uh, uh, size of xi will be less than or equal to 4 and 5 therefore you can say that the x will have a size less than or equal to 4 and square 5 so each each corner in a polytope will have a size less than this uh, this bond okay so therefore if there is a solution uh, then uh, that must lie within this 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 uh, 
uh, this space okay so this space actually is 2 to the power 4 n square 5 so what you can do you can instead of looking at infinite space if i give you constraint you only have to look at a a space which is bounded by this uh, number in all directions and you say okay my solution should be somewhere here okay so you don't need to look at the infinite space you can look at always look into finite space so this gives you some sort of a uh, upper bound where you need to look for the solutions now let's look at the lower boundary size in what granularity i need to look for the points yes yeah, so you have uh, this rational space in, in a bounded box i told you now in this box uh, if i give you ax less than or equal to b what in what granularity you should look for points where you can find a satisfying answer the claim here is that if, if the x less than equal to b is satisfiable then the volume of this uh, this polytope should be big uh, should be bigger than this number okay? so phi is still remains the same as in the previous definition well how do you prove that uh, we will not do the exact calculation i will give you only the intuition why that is that is going to work so since uh, i am assuming this is a sat it's bounded and it's a full dimensional then there must be n plus one point okay such that uh, <clears throat> they are finally independent in this uh, in this uh, constraint system so let's look at it let's look at a two dimensional let's suppose you have this is polyto and uh, in this two dimensional space you can find three points or you can choose three corners it can be and such that uh, that they 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 are finally independent means in the two dimensional space uh, since it's a two dimensional space they don't they don't fall in a straight line straight they cannot be projected on a smaller subspace okay so uh, this is so they form this triangle okay, they are not in a straight line so let's you choose such n plus one points what you can do is uh, uh, you take this n plus one points and uh, uh, you can think about these numbers okay what represent these points and again these points are computed by the the intersection of n n n rows and in equalities embedded in this set of linear inequalities and by solving them okay so there is a is a there, there's a size limit on x0 and xn right you can say that this much how big they can be and how small they can be right and what is the 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 this volume of this triangle which is i had drawn okay let's look at and again that same thing and i had chosen in two points x1 x2 and x0 and i have this triangle what is the volume is this triangle volume of this triangle can be computed by this formula and once you solve this formula you can see that it's just computing a determinant of a matrix and divided by factorial n since you have a, a, a upper bound uh, upper and lower bound on the on the sizes of uh, x0 and x1 you can estimate what could be the largest uh, denominator in the in the determinant okay? and you can estimate the the lower bound on that and once you have a lower bound on that then you can low, lower bound the volume of the whole uh, polytope ax less than equal to b and the, and you can very easily see as we have done in the previous uh, theorem you can calculate exact exact precisely this number so now you can see that there is an upper bound and there is a lower bound on the on the uh, on the size of polyhedron domain okay? uh, sorry size of the polyhedron now we are going to use these two facts to somehow divide my space such that uh, that, that we find a find a solution yeah so how does this work okay so uh so since it's a finite space i will choose a big enough space such that i am guaranteed that the, the my polytope somehow falls in this place okay because of this uh, earlier theorem there must be a solution which is within within that okay so what we do is start the space then i will know that there is a finite space can be divided into with finite granularity you can divide the space into some parts and uh, in each this gr gr small granularity if there is a point satisfying there then every point there satisfies so then you you don't need to look at the inf you don't have to look for infinite precision and you may be able to find solution so what do you do uh, you you take a take a space in which polytope intersects uh, you guarantee to intersect then you you find the sub some other space okay 
this part is unsatisfiable i throw it again again the smaller space again i say throw it away and because the throwing away does in a in a in a very systematic manner you end up either finding a solution or you cut all the space and then nothing is left satisfying so itself yeah and this method is done using ellipses and we will and and uh, we will see how this process lead to a a polynomial size uh, algorithm